All right. Welcome to the He Said, She Said on relationshiping in every aspect of your life. Michelle Hoffman and Sean Coe are master coaches, and we are ready and available to support you in every way that we can wrap our arms around you and up-level the relationships in your life. Whether it's the relationship you have with your inner voice, yourself, money, your business, up-leveling your career or in expanding the reach that you have to make a difference in the world, or if it's a relationship with your clients, your coworkers, your family, your community, or your intimate loved ones, we are here to help you in every aspect of the relationships in your life. So with that, does anybody have any challenges that they're facing that you would like to open up to the group and see what kind of magic we can put on them? I got very quiet. <laughs> yeah, I do have come across a lot of challenges past year. So right. I have a lot of them to discuss, but yeah. <laughs> Well, why don't you go ahead and share some of the challenges that you're facing? My first instinct is to listen, and we can ask and if you ask you if you'd like us to listen, guide, or help. And I'm going to see if I can find a through line between all of your challenges to see if it's like an easy, like there might be a one-click pivot. I call it like if you just change one small thing, it might domino effect everything in the right direction. So that you know oh. what I'm listening for. Uh, before that, if you don't mind, can I turn off my video? Does that work? So yes, go ahead. Oh, okay, thank you. What we want is for you to feel safe and comfortable enough to yeah. say whatever you'd like to say. Yeah, so about. the purpose of joining this meeting was uh, specifically the title of the meeting and uh, the contents mentioned in the meeting. What who will be discussing the meeting. So mostly I, I thought it's related more on the the couple relationship, but as Sean said that it's like wider than that. Uh, so my my like concerns are mostly on the couple relationship. So I had a past, uh, not a very good uh, past relationship, which is my marriage. And uh, I am separated now and possibly going through a divorce soon. And uh, so, yeah, that is a challenge. And over the last year, a lot of things happen. Uh, after my marriage, I got married in 2019. And like after four or five months, suddenly things started changing. And there were a lot of conflicts, arguments. And later on, it uh, went till the separation. Uh, so this is like the overall picture. Hope I'm not like... Uh, uh, you're not getting bored <laughs> on this. Yeah, so this is the overview of like uh, my life in the last couple of years. So when did you separate from your wife? Uh, it's uh, like on June last year. Okay. And where are you at in the divorce process? It will be possibly happening in India because my wife was from India and she got married to me in 2019, February. She came here. Uh, I work on H1 here. And uh, yeah, and then like after, as I told you, like conflicts, arguments. She, I mean, the, the relationship for me was like more on like both of us side and for her, was it like centric on only her and her family? So I'm not sure what was the reason is that uh, she was not mature enough to understand that, that your priority changes after you get married. Uh, but she had like her own priorities uh, to her family and that is, that cause, that was the cause of the main, like that actually created a conflict and then a rift and argument, everything have dropped from that. So she didn't realize that after uh, she's married, she has to be like given priority to the new family she's in rather than her 
back family if i am putting it right i'm not sure i hope you get that <laughs> so i i want to try and do a timeline just so that i have some structure is that is that okay kumar yes yes so you you were both 19 years old no 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 2019 we got married okay. i was like uh, i think 32 and she was 28 and um was this a did you know one another or was this an arranged marriage this is was an arranged marriage yeah though it's not uh, so we uh, met through like our parents uh, through a common link and then we not exactly engage but kind of like okay now we'll be getting married something like that right so then there was a, like a duration of 8 months when i was here in us and she was in india and then we were like talking to each other every day over the phone video calls and all those things so we got to know a lot about each other and uh, yeah so that's what happened in arranged marriage in that part of the world i have a really big question to ask you yeah you're you're at this point i mean i'm putting together the timeline and i realize you're at this point in the timeline where you're getting separated and divorced what would you like to have happen what would i like to have happened that's mm-hmm. a good question so the thing is that uh, like when this type of conflict start happening it's not only happening for one reason the things get automatically uh what i say like attach to each other and then there is conflict for every other reason right the main reason i would what i understood is that she has given a like priority to her family every time uh, and then she was having a hard time settling down here as well uh, i can f- i can feel that because uh, she got the work visa right like in november 2019 but uh, like after 3 4 months she couldn't find a job she gave interview she didn't clear anyone so she didn't got a job then covid happened i think due to that she got more frustrated and uh, that is also a, another reason and then i mean she her priority to her family is and that's what i try to make her understand that Uh, after married it's both of us who takes a priority and then the rest of your parents or my parents but i think she has a, her family has a good hold on her i mean they they control her i would say so yeah okay all of that is i i understand all of that so i would like to know we can certainly go through that and assess different dynamics Right. That could have would have should have happened or what would you like to learn from all of that so that moving forward you are moving into a healthy way in new relationships or would you like to be preserving this one or would you like to save face with the families and your community so <clears throat> what i'm trying to understand at this point is how how can we support you in the biggest actual impact because what i'm hearing is in your head you're going through a spiral to explain this to yourself to justify this to yourself so that your inner voice can um can be okay with it and we can help you do that too so what i'm uh, but i you haven't asked my answered my the big question is what would you like to have happen so that we are sending you in the right direction because it's not our decision what should happen it's yours and whatever you decide on is the right thing and we're going to support you in that so do you understand why i'm asking that yeah, question yeah yeah i i got it so what would have happened what would you like to have happen not what did but now we're here at this point in space and time What would you like to have happen? Would you like to reclaim this relationship? Would you like to disintegrate this marriage and 
safe face in your community and stand tall and give her the respect of standing tall so that you can move forward. I, 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 we're not judging anything. We are here with open arms to support you. So you're like, what's the next step I want to take? Whether to like save the marriage, like move out of the marriage? Is that the question, right? Yeah, send us, help us send you in the right direction. So I mean, the circumstances right now back there doesn't seem like that, that we will be able to back together. Doesn't seem like that. The and I'm going to ask you to answer my question. What would you, Kumar, like to have happen, regardless of what might be hard or easy? What would you like to have happen? I would like to have happen that we sh we we should have gone uh, well together in the marriage, and there was no uh, circumstances like that where this thing could have happened, but it's the, I would say the ego centric behavior of my wife and then her priorities towards her family made this happen, right? So if, so due to that, it getting conflict increase, 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 and then later on this happened, but I would have definitely have her on my side. Uh, if that's possible. Did I answer your question? Would you would you be willing to invest in yourself and in this relationship to rekindle this marriage so that in a situation where everyone is excited and eager and confident and safe and excited about moving forward with a life together with the two of you married is that what you would like to have happen yes okay now i know where to go <laughs> sorry if i didn't uh, no no no. In the right I, way. no you don't need to apologize never to us we're we're okay. here to help but what you were sharing with us was what went wrong and we want to give you control in an out of control situation. Right. So as it stands right now, the two of you are separated and how far are we into a divorce proceeding? Not started yet. Not started. Not started. Right. And is she back in India? Yes. She went back in June last year. Okay. Uh, ooh. What is she, when you guys communicate, what is she saying? We are not communicating at all since the day she okay. left. What was the last communication? Like, what was the last thing she said? Or the last, I mean, like, I mean, it doesn't have I mean, to be the last phrase she said. Th but. That's an, another uh, uh, thing uh, because a lot happened when she left. It's not like she left by herself. She actually, uh, I have, I have to put it that way. So she actually, what happened that day, I mean, we were like talking normally, like we had a huge argument uh, a night before. And the next day, my behavior is like that. If we are fight, like we have an argument, we fight verbally with each other. The next day I'm like, my behavior is like, okay, if the it was last night, let's start fresh with a new day. So I try to keep that aside, those things. So I was similar like that. And we were like talking normally not like very happily, but like normally. Okay, you had your breakfast. I said, yeah, and those things. But suddenly like uh, uh, she was not feeling well. So I said, do you need medicine? She said, uh, I got the medicine. Thanks for asking all those things. Not like normal talk, right? And suddenly she went on phone and she come back with two police officers and she came uh, with two police officers for no reason. Uh, and they just helped him. I said, why did she call you? And they said, she just want to move out. Uh, I'm not sure why she called them. I told you she has a lot of influence of her family. So, so then the police came over. They took, 
she took all her items or belongings because she was, I think, packing everything because she was ready. She just left in 20 minutes. She has like six luggage, three big boxes, all those things. She like 20, 30 minutes, she is done. And uh, so then she went to India. So nothing happened here. I talked to the, after that, I talked to the town here and they said, oh, everything is fine. You need not to worry. She just went back. She just wanted to go back to India. As I told you that she was getting frustrated and not getting a job here. And she was kind of maybe homesick or missing her family a lot, whatever happened. So she just wanted to go to India, like by hook or by crook. So uh, two days before that, I did told her that if you want to go, I will help you. Don't worry. I will uh, get your luggage to the FedEx and all those things. If you need help, let me know. She didn't follow that path, but rather choose to follow this path. Now, back in India, they have filed a false allegations uh, trying to trying to they have not been filed yet but they are trying to so this is in the like in in short this is like hang on in legal matters right so now the relationship stands there that's why i have not talked to her since the last june because i know she was not listening to me here now she's back to her parents she's never going to talk to me and until they are saying that okay go ahead and talk to me so I did text message to her that, where are you? Are you fine? Because I didn't know when she left from here. Neither the police told me. And I did uh, message him, texted him, tried to reach him. But she switched off her phone, never replied the message. And then after a few days, I came to know that she is back in India now. So no point of talking to her at that point. OK. Um. I'm going to need a little bit of help because I'm not from this culture, but so yeah. I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you some questions that will help me because my instinct here is that she's been telling a story to her family because she was not feeling safe. What, uh, what my friend says, you're safe, loved and not alone. But for whatever reasons in your marriage, she was not feeling safe, loved, and cared for. That's what so, she communicated to her parents. Right. So that's later what she in the last, last, family. last, last days, she conveyed to her parents. It was not the case like that. Okay. She, True or false is not. I'm not holding any judgment. Right. But this, is, this is the message that she was sending her family so that her family would ally with her and make it easier for her to return to India. So for whatever reason, she didn't establish safe routes here in the US and she wanted to boomerang, we call it, back to what she was comfortable with. So my instinct says the first thing is to actually um, connect with, I guess, first I'd say connect with community, then connect with family, and then connect with her. Because the culture, as I understand it in India, you're, it's, you're not an individual, you're part of your family and you're and right. the is part of the community. Right. So the right now your name is probably besmirched it's probably she's been telling whatever story so that right. she could you know achieve whatever it was she was wanting to i mean achieve. they are they they are their family is asking money from us right now like give us that money otherwise we'll go to file the case so we are our stand is okay go ahead file the case we haven't done anything wrong we are not worried about that so they are literally like begging for the money right now what is the money situation? I don't, I don't, I just don't know what. Money means. situation is like, like the, I mean, there are some laws back in India, like which favors, which were actually made to help the woman after the marriage. But now they are being like, uh, uh, should I say violated or I'm not getting the right word, but they are not, they are now abused, I would say abused right uh, so what happens is that if some girl goes to like police uh, okay I, I have been like 
like domestic violence has been done with me uh, like 80 90% of the cases are false at the, this point of time so they just now the every system there went to work to make sure that okay let's get the money out of from the boy side because they know that the law favors the girl and if they don't do that either it will be a long legal complications in any ways they have to spend money and all those time and all those things so the girl side try uh, tries to take advantage of that so that's what they are trying to do but we have said no we are not going to give you any money because nothing has happened and we are okay to fight any legal case if you want so again i <clears throat> i just don't understand the system that well is this like a dowry where the the woman's side so of the yeah family so the you, you got that right so the the law which was created was for the girls to help them to save from dowry harassment right okay but, dowry but harassment there's a harass, for me. harassment kind of but later on like this becomes so uh not later on like these days it's so much abuse that even if nothing happens the girl just go to the police station and say that okay i have been harassed so she takes the advantage and uh, everything the blames come on whoever she is like naming whether it's a parent sister brother so no matter what so but kumar in the quiet of the night in the deep deep middle of the night in when you when there's no other distractions around in the depth of your heart what you would like to have happen is to have her come back and be your wife and build a family together yeah see what like when we were like not talking for the last two weeks right because we had a, like a very big argument based on the scenarios created and i knew that she is planning to leave right so in my mind i never thought that she will take such a big step that she will call the police for no reason and just to get out from uh, the place that's it because her family plan the dramatic exit all those things so that they can show back in india all those things so i was thinking that she might go but to, like later on we'll talk over time and like after a month or two she will come back and she will get time she will be back with family uh, she will spend some time and all those things so due to covid uh, we couldn't travel as well at that time you know that in the june so it was not easy for her to leave just like that so i think that was the reason she called the police so that they can show that oh she needs immediate attention or something like that so i i would i thought like that that it, she might she will be going to india uh and later on we'll be talking over the phone and we will like hopefully manage and talk between both of us and manage the situations which should have come or which came which was not good for us and then everything will be good and we will be she will be back and we will go ahead with the family plan and all those things okay and what does your family think should happen I mean, they always wanted uh, their child to be happy, right? That the marriage should have worked, and uh, uh, they were always worried. Like, are you both of you doing good? Both of you doing good? And I always used to say, yeah. Even there were like uh, problems going on. I didn't like to discuss uh, about my life, especially my personal relationship, uh, like me and my wife, to anyone, even my parent. If they are just saying, are you good? I'm good. Even if we had a, like a big fight last night, I won't tell them because I know they will get worried and this uh, in relationship, these kind of things happen. So I don't want to give like attention to them. So this is what I'm like. So I don't, I don't discuss with anyone much that what is going on between both of us. So yeah, they were, they wanted the, uh, 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 everything to be normal but that didn't went well even her parents i would say should was wanting like that but she started to like pass very like false information to them like a small example would be like uh, 
a day before when uh, we had a like large argument due to something happened back in India. And she said, I want uh, a fruit cake. And we used to have a from Whole Foods, a fruit cake. I said, let's go and buy a fruit cake. We got a fruit cake and at the, uh, we came back and we are watching movie like uh, every couple do like a movie night and we are having a cake. We are having a good time, really good time. And suddenly in the morning, their parents call me and they are saying, you are harassing our daughter. I said, what? Are you sure? I mean, we are having a cake last night. And she said, what cake? I never had a cake. So I knew at that point that she's now she's starting lying to me so valiantly. And now she's desperate to do anything to go back. So at that point of time, I just put my, you can say all, like no way of now uh, trying, I was trying a lot to help her to understand what uh, is her responsibility and my response in the relationship, how we need to move forward. But she just had one thing in mind. She just wanted to go back for, I mean, um, I mean, the one thing, I mean, uh, uh, the one reason I would, I joined this meeting was that I want to understand what exactly went wrong. I haven't got that answer actually uh, because I'm never going to get that answer from her now, but I'm not sure what actually went wrong. Okay, so what you would like from us is uh, I, I'm split in two directions. I think we could, based on what you've shared with us, I can make some guesses as to what went wrong, but that's a different answer than. Uh, so I guess I could ask, the, what, what would you like from us? Would you like us to help your brain come to the, an understanding of what went wrong? Or would you like us to help you regain that, regain that reputation and go get her and be in a healthy marriage? Is that a possibility, do you think? Like all the things I have told you, is that a possibility to get her back? Um, I think every, I every, do. But everything's I'll tell possible. You, Anything's possible. Everything's possible. Um, I you may think, not like what you have to do to get it. Thank you, Sean. Um, I think between Sean and me, um, that yes, I think we could do help you do that. And even if it didn't happen, you will have rebuilt your reputation in your community with both families and with her and in your own mind. And that might be what you need more than how did this happen? I was like I going think, in that. Yeah, go ahead, Sean. I actually think that what went wrong is a very, I, I don't want to say simple, but it's a very clear thing. And it's its misaligned expectations of what the marriage was going to be, right? It sounds right. to me like her whole, in her mind, she had this idea that it would be just like it was in India with her family and the support and all that kind of stuff, which is not, right or wrong it's just what she kind of projected and your expectations were that it would be her kind of leaving her family to go build something with you which those are oceans apart in expectations and so mm -hmm. then it created tension every single day um now that's solvable the question i have for you would be would you be willing to move back to india to solve it no, I can't because uh, then I have legal complications, right? I can't move back to India now since they are planning some legal action for legal for legal whatever things on my side. So I can't move to India to like because even if I move, like supposed to, I'm not. I will. I won't be sure that whether I will be fabricated there or they are actually willing to uh, make this relationship work. That is the reason. So I, I know I am like putting you in a very difficult situation right now. Not, uh, like, no, not at all. Actually, oh, not okay. at all. Like the, the, the challenge is just deciding what you truly want and how bad you truly want. It. Like, right. like that's the challenge, right? Like, like to be honest, there's a shit storm of shittiness in front of you if you want to make this marriage work, <laughs> you know? And, and, man, I agree. Um, and, and, in, it's probably going to come with you basically swallowing every pride and ego you have, falling on your own sword, owning everything that they've, you, not like owning lies, but like basically throwing yourself at the mercy of the of her family's court to say, I love you more than any of the shittiness that you've done to me. Right. 
Right. And with that, you go to India, you demonstrate this, and they there won't be a lawsuit because they will see who you truly are. Not doing that, they will not see that. You will, I mean, that's what I was saying, but you need to make a statement to the community and demonstrate who you truly are and why you truly want this relationship to work and how you're gonna go about doing that. If you don't go 120%, 180% in, in that direction, then they're the one, then the scale goes in their direction. And that's and, totally and it's not fair. fair. It's not fair. It's not right. You're just the scapegoat of all of our unhappiness right now. And that's not to say you're innocent and perfect, but like you, like they're using you as the excuse for her to go back to India and be with her family again, which is what she wanted. Now, I wish that you guys could have communicated about that and kind of align these expectations ahead of time, but this is just where we're at. But when you say you want this marriage to work, like there is a very clear way to get this, give this marriage an opportunity. Like we can't, we can't, we can't promise the outcome, of course, like we can't predict the outcome, but there's a very clear way to give this marriage an opportunity to work. And it's going to come from your own sacrifice of your pride and your ego and doing things that you probably don't want to do. But Sean and I can set those steps up for you so that you then will have set the set your intentions and your image correctly in the eyes of both of all the whole extended family the community and yourself so you can walk tall i just Please. want to get clarity and when you're saying getting my image clear what does exactly that mean to me what she what yeah what she has done is said whatever was necessary to achieve her goal, which was to move home back with her family. And that then um, made, it ruined your image and reputation for whatever right. She, right. she took, she um, decreased your value so that she could achieve her goal. Right. And she may have done that- fear, worry, nervousness, uncertainty, whatever it was. It's, it's you know, she may not have done that intentionally to harm you. She was so just- now she's back in India. Why, why she will be coming back here now? Suppose if I try everything, what will take her to here? I mean, do you see any like possibility of that? Like, even if I'm trying to convince her like better than before I did, uh, but do you think she will understand that and based on that and all those legal complications going on so in in my mind i'm playing this out like a movie and where you're before at that, now, before that sorry to cut you okay, go ahead. before that you say i mean there are a lot of things i mean this is a whole lot discussion like i want to tell you each and everything but this is a small a lot an hour meeting i yeah. Uh, that would give you a more better perspective as well. But uh, I appreciate that you are still doing a good job. And the thing is that uh, when we are like talking in the, in the, my parents like go there and talk with the parents and the, my wife is also there and she like strike to blame and we are saying, okay, we're not going to give you any money, but you can come back. We do want you back. So my parents are saying they are that. But they don't she they are saying that okay we don't want to come back we just want the money so in that scenario this is a, like the actual scenario practical scenario now where they are saying we don't want to send our daughter back but we want money back so in that scenario i it's pretty hard to for her to come back i think right that so um is she coming back to the United States or is she coming back to you? No, no, she is in India. She's like. Right, but that's not my question. Do you want her to come back to the United States and that's the highest priority? Or is the highest priority that she comes back to you and it is ir it doesn't matter where in the world you are, you no, have. No, US, 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 hmm. United States. Okay, so I see three percentage odds of likely results, right? Um, that, that are positive, right? 
The first is we help you clear your name and regain good standing in the community. That's the most likely outcome. The second most likely outcome is that you would get her back and you would stay in India close to her family. The least likely outcome, I think, is you get her back and she comes back to the United States. Now, that doesn't mean that it's a 0% chance. I just don't see that as the most likely outcome because the reason she did all of this and left you is because she wanted to be close to her family in India. Like that, right. I don't think that just magically changes in her the right. equation of how right. she sees right. the world. The, I think right. that's probably I mean, always going to be a bottleneck. Right, I'm going to add to that because when when this is the he this is the she said and Liddy, you can help me with this one. When a woman gets married, there's all this magical thinking that goes with it. We're born into this world and we're told we're going to grow up and there's going to be, I mean, in the US, there's a white picket fence. There's going to be an equivalent in India. There's going to be a big celebration. Your families are going to pick the right person for you. It is so exciting. This, I mean, and you may, you know, you, it's the whole community is supporting you and there's celebrations that last a week and you know, you are the center of it. And it is, it is amazing. And even just as mammals, this is part of what happens as we grow up and we leave the nest and we create our own family. And then we, you know, continue the species. So it can be very base, but here's, so here's what in part, I think in part it would take is giving her enough safety and confidence and inspiration and independence that this is what she wants more than anything else. So to create that situation that, the, that what you would like to have happen is what she wants more than anything else in the world. That's what I think it would take to have her come to the US. And that that is, it's not a simple formula. Do I think it can happen? Yes. And to, to encourage that, I absolutely believe you need the community behind you, which will take valiant efforts and that do, they're doable. And you would need the family's support, yours and hers. But I mean, what woman, that something seriously, we'd need to get to some really fine level grit for if a, if a gentleman came, my husband, for example, I mean, in this case, did all of this valiant effort, she's going to have to think it through. And with that, making a situation so attractive that she wants it more than anything else is what, what I think will make that switch turn and she'll want that. It's not going to be an easy process. It's doable, but not easy. And, and the key will be a deep understanding of how she sees the world and what's important to her. Because who, who else would go to that effort? And for someone to do that, where the families had said, we see the two of you coming together and continuing the species of our humanity and our culture and everything. And we see that this is a perfect bond. I mean, you have the world in your favor, but it will take some work because society and insecurities have gotten in the way. So the question really is, is it worth making that investment in yourself and the situation to make that happen? Do you want it that much? I think at this point of time, like getting, making her understand uh, and get her back to the US uh, based on what currently is going on back there. Uh, like as Sean said, nothing is possible, right? But it's pretty close to impossible. As I told you that first thing is communicating with her directly is very difficult because she's on the like the uh, the safer side of 
her family. That will be like right. So communicating with her directly is not the most direct way to make this happen. So he hear me if you hear nothing else. That's already been there's blocks there. So do not go, don't keep hitting your head against that wall. That is not the most efficient way to connect and communicate with her. Do you, do you believe that? Yeah, maybe a starting point, but later on I have to talk to her, right? Mm -mm -mm. She's, we would set up a situation where she would reach out and want to talk to you. You can't make oh. someone do something on their own will. You can't okay. make them. You're like, I want to make her understand. You can't make it. You can't, it's like the difference between force and finesse. And what I hear from you is force. I want to make her understand. I was trying to tell her that she has to let go of her family and that we are a new family. It's like, uh, there's an art to this. And the art is invoking inspiration and desire. And the same thing will happen in all of your future communications. And I imagine that this kind of situation will occur to you over and over until you figure out this art. Because making someone understand is not a way to in, invoke their communication, trust and respect with you. Inviting them in and building that trust and respect is how to do it so that she can't think of a world without you in it. That's what you want to have happen so that when she goes to bed at night, she can't stop thinking about you and that all she wants is to be close to you no matter where in the world you might be. That's what we want to create. And right now she is being... She has layers and layers of her own stories in her head and in her heart and layers and layers of stories that she's shared with her friends and her community and her family that are going to make it very hard for you. So we have to unlock that and give you an opportunity to step in and be the, the man who you truly are, who is going to be exactly what she needs, not what you think she needs to do, but be exactly who she needs and desires. That's gonna be a little bit of a different person than you are right now. And not solving this for yourself, either with her or someone else, I truly believe you're gonna keep running into it. So can we move back to when you were talking about moving up to into the, the whole um, marriage ceremony and the week of celebration and whatever? For many women, the focus goes to the celebration and it's like that's where it ends and they got married and everybody lived happily ever after. And it's when that ceremony is over and now you're in a new situation, it's a very rude awakening and often not even remotely close to what the woman is expecting and often not what the man is expecting either. And so I think that one of the things that would be really helpful is if you could, in, in your mind, try to see from her perspective what was good about being in the United States and what is not so good for her about being in India. Um, I'm not sure about how things are there now, but in a lot of other countries, the, the woman is very protected in her home. And for those of us in the United States, that being very protected in your home feels like stifling and being in jail. And so it, it depends on how she looks at it. If she looks at it as protection or is if she looks at it as um, incarceration, being, being you know, stuck and unable to move out. Um, I mean, expand herself and be more of herself. And so 
I think one of the things that you probably really need to consider is how you can help her and allow her to be more of herself without feeling restricted. And that, if you can do that, that might entice her to want to come back to the United States. And she was uh, not restricted at all here. The day she came here, right, in U.S., and like after a month, she had the driving license. She had her own car. I have given her the credit card to spend anything whenever she... I knew that because she was earning that she was doing a job in India. So I know that for some time until she got a work visa, she had to wait for that like four and five months. And I know that when somebody is earning and they stop doing a job, and if they ask, if they have to ask money from someone, like I need this, I need that, they had a little feel of guilt of doing that. Uh, I know that. So I just, when she came here, I just gave her a credit card. I said, see, this is your own. You can spend it like as, uh, like whenever you want, you need not to ask me. Okay, so she had the financial independence. She has the independence of going out because she had the car. And uh, I mean, what I mean, she was not restricted at all in terms like I'm not sure which exactly restriction are you referring to. But and we have like uh, been to Florida. She has seen, I would say, half of the Florida in just one and a half years. We have been to New York, we have to Virginia Beach. And I was planning in Vegas, I didn't went, and Charlotte as well. So in one and a half years, I think we were like uh, visiting a lot of places as well and uh, eating outside every weekend, like like every other do couple do. So we were having a good time. I tried to, like, we were having a premium membership of the AMC. Like in winters, we used to watch three movies every week. I mean, I know winters, you can't move much, so... She has a premium membership of the gym. I mean, what else? I mean, what is the restriction here? I don't understand that. So that's not exactly the kind of freedom I was talking about. Um, best way for me to describe it is when I was living at home, there were certain things that I was expected to do every day. I was, and I'm talking about when I was growing up, not not after I got married, but I was expected every morning to be the first person to get up, to make the coffee, to take care of the smaller children, to get everybody ready for school. Right. And then when I came home, I was expected to take care of the laundry, take care of getting dinner ready, go to my job, which only lasted for a couple of hours, and then come home and clean up the kitchen. And, you know, and it was like nonstop, all these responsibilities, things that I was expected to do. And then when, when I left home, left home, I still had to do those things, but I was doing them for my own family, for myself. And if she trade, ended up trading one set of expectations for another set of expectations, she still doesn't feel the freedom. And just because she has a car and she gets to go here and go there and do these things, that doesn't necessarily mean that... Um, that she feels freedom, she still she may still feel restriction, especially if you as the husband had a bunch of expectations. Because of course, you know, when I got married, my husband had expectations and I had expectations. And we were just lucky that our expectations were fairly similar and we stayed married for a very long time until all of a sudden he wanted different things than I wanted and he left for somebody else. But Still, you know, it's, it's, it's just a perspective and, and I really recommend a book. It's um, Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. And it talks about how you express love and how you feel love and how somebody else expresses it and feels it. And she may have felt like it didn't matter what she did. It wasn't enough for you, which is why she wanted to go home or you may have been expressing your appreciation in a way that didn't connect to what she needs in order to feel appreciated. So we only have a few minutes left. Um, Kumar, again, I'd like to hear from you. It, it seems to me like Sean and I have, have a clear understanding, a pretty clear understanding of where you're at now and a basic understanding of what you would like to have happen. 
Um, we also know that because we have been coaching people for <laughs> decades, um, we know that if you don't figure this out, you're gonna run into it again and again. So the question really is, how willing are you to do what it takes to understand who you are and where you fit in the world and what your purpose is and what is the art of attracting, keeping and enjoying a relationship like this in your life? That's, that's really the big question. And we are happy to help you achieve that goal. Can I add Thank one you. last thing? I was but, not I was not meaning to be um, biased in my thought process. I was just trying to give you a different perspective mm -hmm. to look at things from so that no matter how you move forward, you have a better understanding of what can be happening in the background. Liddy, that's the beauty of he said, she said. Because we all have a, I mean, what is one of the, one of my nicknames is the perspective professor. Mm -hmm. And I'm supposed to say it slowly so it doesn't sound like Peter Piker, pick a pick a box. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know that I can adopt that one. The perspective professor. Um, so, Kumar, stay on the line for a moment, but let's close this up. Um, Sean, will you close for us? Yes, this has been another wonderful version of He Said, She Said with our magical guests and our magical time. Uh, the traditional He Said, She Said leaves lots of carnage and collateral damage. This is about elevation and improving your relationship with every aspect of your life. So welcome, Kumar. Tremendous. Very proud of you. Your vulnerability and your strength and your courage was off the charts. And so I want to honor you. And I'm very excited about the transformation and elevation we're going to be able to provide for you. Letty, always a pleasure. Beautiful in pink, magenta, purple, whatever color we want to describe that as. <laughs> Michelle, the wonderful Michelle, thank you. This has been He Said. She, she said. said. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.